The most common type of aircraft communication that most frequently comes to our mind is that which takes place between the pilot and the air traffic controller and uses a very high frequency. Several other means are also available that include HF communication which we have discussed in the previous lecture and also the satellite communication which we will discuss in the upcoming lectures. Hello everyone, we are back with our next lecture on our lecture series of aircraft communication and navigation. Today we will learn how VHF communication occurs, what are the components used and the type of antenna used for transmission and receiving. So let us begin with the discussion. VHF communication systems are widely used for maintaining contact between the ground and the aircraft. This employs the line of sight transmission which translates to a range of about 30 miles of an aircraft operating at 1000 feet above the ground or about 135 miles with an aircraft operating at 10,000 feet. This system operates between the frequency range of 118 MHz to 137 MHz. However, the channel spacing has been reduced from 200 kHz to 8.33 kHz in most of the countries, which has enabled the ability to triple the number of usable frequencies. The equipment required for this communication includes a transceiver, antenna, microphone, control panel and a speaker. The transceiver is where the most of the action occurs. This device has 8 separate functions to perform. It has 2 modes of operation, operational mode and maintenance mode. The operational mode has selections of mode 0 alpha, mode 0 bravo and mode 1 alpha. They adjust the sensitivity and the selectivity of the radio. Whereas in the maintenance mode, built-in test equipment uses the central diagnostic system to give the condition of the component and saves the faults in the non-volatile memory of the line and base maintenance. During the transmission, a carrier wave is generated at a specific frequency and wavelength. This carrier wave requires amplification, so it has the ability to travel through the rest of the transmitter. The next step is to couple the information to be sent on the wave. After the intelligence is added, the signal goes to the final power amplification where the signal strength is determined and the modulated wave then leaves the transmitter. The transceiver contains the sub-assemblies packed into lightweight casing with single recessed drags mounted on the rear panel from where the radio frequency connector is integrated to the system and the VHF antenna. The receiver section of the transceiver works almost in the reverse of the transmitter. The control panel displays and allows the tuning of the VHF frequencies. It is installed in the forward cockpit on the central pedestrian area. The frequency control is achieved by the concentric knob and the frequency increments on rotating clockwise and decrements on rotating anticlockwise. The volume control uses a potentiometer to allow variable attenuation of the audio. The squelch control disables the receiver output when two signals are being used to prevent noise between the ground transmission. And the mode selector switch provides the selection of different modes. The antenna used in the VHF communication is a single coaxial cable routed to each VHF transceiver and is vertically polarized. The radio frequency N type female connector is attached to the aluminum base where the aluminum foil gasket is connected with the electromagnetic sealant which makes an electrical contact between the gasket and the aircraft structure. As usual, there are two systems installed on the aircraft, VHF1 and VHF2. VHF3 is optional and is on standby with Acarus in most aircraft. VHF1 and 3 antennas are attached on the upper fuselage whereas the VHF2 antenna is attached to the lower fuselage. Now VHF communication is considered line of sight communication. So at what point does the VHF lose its air to ground capability? Let us discuss this with a little bit of maths and geometry. Consider an aircraft flying at 10,000 feet from the surface of the earth. Suppose A be the point where the VHF signal is received by the tower. Neglecting the height of the tower, 
let d be the distance the signal traveled for the line of sight communication so applying the pythagoras theorem we get the following equation r plus h whole square equals to r square plus d square where h is the height of the aircraft and r is the radius of the earth when we solve this equation for the line of sight distance we get d is equal to under root of h times 2 r plus h which gives us the line of sight distance available at minimum altitude so if our aircraft is flying at 10000 feet the minimum distance for line of sight communication should be approximately 104 nautical miles as the height of the aircraft increases the distance also increases therefore to use vhf or hf for line of sight communication but to go beyond the horizon you will need to bounce the hf signal off the ground water or the ionosphere so i hope that you all understood this lecture very well feel free to ask any doubt or query in the comment section and if you find the video informative do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for upcoming videos till then keep learning keep practicing